Hello again, everybody. Mark here at Twanger's Turntable. Um, thanks for stopping by, first and foremost. Hope you're all doing well on this great, I don't know when I'll post this, so whatever they, this day is, I hope it's a great day. Um, I'm back to do uh, another entry into one of the VC challenges, this time for Christian over at his channel, CGC Vinyl Guy. And this is actually in recognition of uh, two occasions, I guess, uh, his 60th birthday, forthcoming in November, but also uh, his push to 500 subs. Uh, the contest is my 60th birthday contest, a push to 500 subscribers. So that's that's the essence of his, uh, his challenge. If you've not checked out his channel, please do so. Go over to CGC Vinyl Guy and uh, sub him up. Check out some of his content, like, uh, share. Put the word out there to the VC. Um, as I mentioned before, if you go and check out someone's uh, channel, take a second. It only takes a second. Hit the like button, sub them up, um, whoever they may be. Just, you know, it's easy. And uh, it's just what we do. It's just part of the community, uh, supporting each other. And it's, uh, it's a great way to do so while you enjoy your hobby. Uh, I certainly enjoy it. And in fact, aside from this, I really don't do anything else on YouTube or social media to speak of uh, to any large degree. Anyway, I digress. So the contest rules are as follows. Uh, to recognize his 60th birthday, uh, you must subscribe to his channel, which I have. Um, second rule here is to show six albums that were released the year when you were six years old. Um, so my year will be 1974. I was born in 68, so I was six in 1974 talk about those uh talk about the favorite songs off of those albums and memories you may have of them so i'll do that the best i can um i don't know if i have a lot of memories that were of that present uh, of that time uh, probably memories i associate more with after the fact um, at six years old i don't know if i was listening to much of any of the stuff that i'm going to present though I, i'm sure i probably heard it at the time but it was all AM radio where I was and uh, not much else until later. I did have older siblings that were, they like to rock. <laughs> uh, anyway, and a disclaimer here is do not show multiples of the same band or artist. So yeah, that's important because in 74, I can think of several bands that had multiple albums in the same year. Uh, entries, uh, video entries only. So you can't describe your six uh, releases in the comments is what he's alluding to there. And number three, please let me know in the comments section when you posted your entry so I can put you in the drawing. So don't necessarily care about the contest, the drawing, whatnot, but I will certainly uh, hashtag uh, CGC Vinyl Guy and notify you when it's uh, been posted. So, okay, we'll start off. Uh, 1974, as I alluded to, uh, one of my favorite albums, although, again, I'm not so sure I can recollect, you know, um, it being in my wheelhouse in 74 though it certainly would have got lots of radio play because it was a huge album and that's the uh release from super tramp crime of the century and i i don't know what memories i can directly associate with this other than it starts off um side one school bloody well right hide in your shell asylum like these are all just amazing tunes in my humble opinion uh and then it gets better, I think. You flip it over side two, it starts off with Dreamer, uh, followed by Rudy, if everyone's listening. And then to close it off, Crime of the Century. I mean, wow. That's a killer tune. I mean, it's a killer album. And this came out in 1974. And uh, yeah, just an amazing album. Um, Bob Benberg was on drums for this. And uh, another, I, I just like to make note of drummers I, I i love percussion drums of of all sorts and that's usually what stands out for me that 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 moves a needle for me when the drums are solid then i'm then i'm in i'm in uh but roger hodson um, um amazing vocalist i mean uh richard davies also i mean just yeah anyway enough about that that's my first entry from 1974 when i was six Next one is a debut by this band who I became a huge fan much later on. Wasn't even aware of them in 1974. Um, 
and I'm going to show a 2021 reissue uh, with alternate cover art. Um, and there's there's um, bureaucratic reasons for that or record label reasons for that, but I prefer the actual, what a lot of people would consider boring original artwork, but this is the reissue and it's uh, Judas Priest Rockerola. It was released in 74. And it's a fantastic album. I mean, there's there's those who don't even acknowledge it being part of their catalog. Um, and but but I, I actually love it. Um, side one is good. Uh, one for the road, Rockerola, Winter Deep Freeze, Winter Retreat, Cheater. It's kind of just all one tune really there. Uh, but side B for me is really where it's at. Uh, Never Satisfied, Run of the Mill. I, I actually love that tune. Um, Dying to meet you, and then it ends off with uh, Caviar Mess, and just just a great album. I mean, this is when they're with Gull Records, so I'm sure there's probably something to do with that factor with the uh, reissue, and it's actually on colored vinyl. Um, love this, love this. I'm a, kind of a sucker for the colored vinyl, but the splatter, and it's just a great, great. It actually sounds really good. Um, I think this is part of the uh, Rocktoberfest reissue, Record Store Day reissue in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, those who may be uh, more in the know in that regard. I don't think there's any mention of it here. But yeah, it is definitely the 2021 reissue. Oh, what's it say on the hype sticker? Judas Priest Rock and Roller Limited Edition 180 gram gatefold vinyl, translucent grape, and white with black splatter. But uh, doesn't say much more than that. But that's from 1974. That's their debut. Incredible. Uh, of course, nothing like what Priest would go on to sound like. Even in, even their follow up, Sad Wings of Destiny, is markedly different. Um, but of course, you get into uh, um, Hellbent for Leather, Stained Class, uh, British Steel, very, very different, uh, even Sin After Sin. Um, but anyway, next up for 1974, one of my favorite drummers as a child, uh, young person, was uh, not many people probably know who he is, but a uh, gentleman by the name of Daryl Sweet. So some of you who are fans will know who that was, but he was a drummer for Nazareth. Uh, this came out in uh, 1974. This is rampant. Great album. Um, I've got to pull out the uh, the vinyl here. What do they do with the vinyl? Oh. Anyway, it's best known for uh, the big hit would be Shanghai and Shanghai. Um, and I just associate those songs actually with my older brothers because they would they had. Uh, Several of the Nazareth albums, um, Hair of the Dog, uh, Greatest Hits, uh, Razmanaz, I think, uh, Loud and Proud, maybe. But anyway, um, also on, on the Greatest Hits, all these songs would have been on there, the popular ones, Shanghai and Shanghai. Sunshine was another song off this album. Um, um, but those are the standouts that, that I recall in our, the, 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 the entire album is really good. Check it out if you haven't already. Next up is, uh, this is one of those bands I mentioned that I, there was a couple I could have chosen from in 1974. Um, but this is uh, the one I chose. It's a more bluesy feel to it, I find, but it's Deep Purple, Stormbringer. This is from 1974 with Coverdale on vocals. Another one of my favorite drummers, Ian Pace. Um, but yeah, kind of a... Those who are familiar with White Snake. It, 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 it's very... Uh, it's kind of an introduction of things to come. Um, that that distinct vocals of uh, Coverdale is present here, um, but this is very bluesy. Um, Stormbringer, for sure, to me, is probably the standout. Holy Man is a great, great tune. They're all really good. It's Yeah, I don't know how to pick one, but uh, I'm not going to pick one. <laughs> That's how. Um, but yeah, very, very good album. Um, but of course, Burn also came out, Deep Purple. That's Probably the more rockier, rock, rocker of an album than this one. Um, but that's, uh, I don't have that one in my vinyl collection. Um, so this is just stuff I have in vinyl. 
So what is that? That's one, two, three, four, five. And this will be number six. Okay, so this is the debut from Bad Company from 1974. Yeah, amazing album, if you ask me. Paul Rogers on vocals doesn't get much better, in my humble opinion. And Simon Kirk on drums, fantastic. Mick Ralphs on guitar, Boz Burrell on bass. Uh, one of the first, if not the first, if I recall, bands signed by the uh, Led Zeppelin label, Swan Song. Uh, but it's the 1974 debut, probably best known for Can't Get Enough. That was a big tune of theirs. Uh, that's side one, and then Rocksteady, Ready for Love, uh, very popular Bad Company tune. Don't Let Me Down, uh, but then you flip over and the title track, uh, Bad Company, great tune. I actually really like that tune. I've actually heard some people say they don't care for it, but hey, that's what makes this so interesting is everybody's, uh, it's subjective to one's own tastes. Um, the way I choose be next up moving on another great, great classic bad company tune. And then it closes out with Siegel and that's it. That's the six for 74. I do want to give an honorable mention to one more, if I may, and Christian, I know you're a, a bit of a Beatles guy and it's a well-known fact. These guys were very heavily influenced by the Beatles. And of course, as soon as I mentioned who I'm talking about. Jeff Lynn has gone on record as saying such, right? He's just a huge Beatles fan. His idea of ELO was um, where they would be, where the Beatles would be if they had not uh, stopped performing in 1970. And uh, of course, their 74 release of El Dorado. And the one on here is probably, possibly one of the first ELO songs I ever heard. Can't get you out of my head. Can't get it out of my head. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, great, great album. Um, from 1974. Lyric sheet in there. So that's just the honorable mention. Um, wanted to give an honorable mention to also Sweet, which was also another one of my favorite bands growing up. One, one of my favorite drummers, uh, Mick Tucker. Um, in the UK, they released uh, Desolation Boulevard. Um, didn't come out over here in North America until 75, so it didn't qualify technically. Um, but it's got some of my favorite tracks on there of all time by that band. Um, in fact, if I was going to own one Sweet album, that would be it. Uh, Sweet Fanny Adams is a close runner-up, but just the way they, they redid the tracks for that uh, 74 release of Desolation Boulevard, especially the U.S. pressing, in my opinion, North American pressing, um, which featured the Ballroom Blitz tune on there, um, Fox on the Run, Sweet F.A., the 16s, wow. Um, no, you don't. So many great tunes on there. Um, ACDC. Anyway, that's it. That's my entry, Christian. Uh, happy 60th birthday. I have no doubt you'll have no, no issue exceeding 500 subs. Great channel going on over there. So as I alluded to, folks, if you've not checked out his channel, go over there. Uh, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. If you stop by somebody's channel, just... Hit that subscribe button. It takes a second, and it does mean a lot for the algorithms and and the like. Make a comment, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Cheers, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you on my next video here at Twanger's Turntable. Uh, until then, take care.